Hey, welcome to a pro wrestler's handbook. Cranking out these videos. Um, I'm going to meet my obligations. I've demanded of the wrestlers and other people that they step up their game. So I'm stepping up my game. I haven't done a pro wrestler's handbook in a while. <clears throat> and so I was thinking of what I could speak about. And um, the thing that's surprised me most about the pro wrestler handbook series in particular is anytime I thought ah, I'm saying something way too obvious, those are the things that a lot of the people contact me the most and say, boy, I really got a lot out of that. And that's something that either a trainer hasn't done with me or um, that I've never really officially had spelled out to me, whether it was structure of a match um, or how a card should be structured. All of these things that I sort of took for granted that are that are common knowledge aren't necessarily common and uh, instead of being mad about that i figure i'll, I'll help um and so tonight's is going to be on uh, obligations right what should each person be doing on show night and in preparation of the show and i'm as thorough as i could be but i'm sure i'll have to make a follow-up because i'm sure there's things that i've forgotten i've jotted down a few notes but you know how i do i usually just kind of wing it and um, so things will be missed but I came up with a couple of things um, and I broke it down. <clears throat> what are the ring announcers obligations on show night? What are the referees obligations on show night? What are the promoters obligations on show night? Uh, what are the bookers obligations on show night? And what are the wrestlers obligations on show night? Now, if there's other people involved, managers, you can kind of figure out where you fit into this whole fucking thing, I'm sure, right? <clears throat> Oh, got that F-bomb out of the way. Um, let's go into it. I'm going to start with talking about... There's there's like a, a thing that I've addressed before and that seems to be pretty controversial. Who should be promoting the show? Right? Um, the answer is, of course, everybody. But I think that something that is done incorrectly by everybody... Everybody, when they talk about that everybody should promote the show, is the the problem that I have with that notion is one, the promotion of the show should go primarily to the promoter, hence the title, dickheads, right? They potentially reap the most financial benefit if the show does well. They have conceivably have the most money at stake as well. So it would behoove them to promote the show. And of course, they want others to promote their show as well, especially if they're paying them money um, for a service that they are rendering on their show. However, um, I came up with something that I'm just going to run by you. And again, I've never heard it said like this, but I think it sums up everything in a nutshell. Here's the difference. If you are a promoter, there are three things that you should promote, but they go in this priority order. The most important thing for a promoter to promote is the show itself. Second, they should promote themselves. There are a number of prominent promotions in or near the Georgia area where the promoters don't have themselves front and center. And I think that is a mistake. I think it is a mistake, for example, I'll be specific, that I have to think hard on who Viral's promoter is. It's not James Caleb Kitchens. And if you didn't know that, that's a problem. And whose fault is that? That's the promoter's problem. Now, I've seen in videos lately when they've been promoting that he's put himself as part of it, and that's great. But promoters should be promoting their show first themselves second, and then the individual matches last. That should be the least amount of concern for the promoters because it's about putting the show over. Now, the matches are a part of that, of course, but sometimes the boys get mad. Now, he talked about this match, but he didn't talk about my match. Fuck. Right? When Dana White promotes MMA. What are the fights that he talks about the most? The main matches. But what is he primarily? An ambassador for UFC. 
And then he gets himself over. We all know who fucking Dana White is. We all know who Vince McMahon is. Vince McMahon's obligation is to promote WWE and then to promote himself and then to promote individual matches because you see the matches are impermanent. They come and they go with each show. So for him to devote a great deal of his energy into promoting something that is basically going to go away as soon as the show is done is a waste of energy and resources in a lot of ways. Does that make sense? It will. Bookers should also be promoting. But I'll get back to what their obligations are. The wrestlers should be promoting as well. What should they be promoting? First priority, promote yourself. It's not enough to share a show poster. In fact, I think that's the lamest thing that you can do. You should be promoting yourself. You should be doing promos. You should be talking up your match. Make sense? Yes. Right? <coughs> Promoters, we know their priority. Show themselves matches. For wrestlers, it's themselves, the matches, starting with their own, but they might talk about other matches on the card. Imagine if a wrestler did that. Yes, you know, I have a, Gunnar Miller talks about, I have this match with John, with Loco, right? Did a great job promoting that match and promoting himself first and foremost. But if he wanted to, he can then, and he talked about Southern Honor, which is great. He has his priorities in order. He could also talk about other matches that interest him on that card, since that would be his second level of priority, right? He's like, I, he's like, I'm not looking past my opponent, but I'm looking to beating him. But I'm also very interested in this thing with Joe Black and and William Huckabee, and here's why. Or I'm interested in that main event. You know, I know Corey Hollis. And um, Logan Creed are going to go at each other. And because that's my ultimate goal, I definitely have my eye on where that title situation is going. Whatever. Um, that's how wrestlers can have the biggest benefit of the show. Plus, I feel like it's protecting kayfabe if you do that. And you're saying, what's the point of... No, it's always good to protect it. It's always good to err on the side of we're presenting... A world of reality, a bubble that we are creating that we want people to live inside and be excited about going to and spending money on. And wrestlers wouldn't promote the show, right? They're, they're doing it indirectly all the time anyway. A wrestler would be most concerned, an athlete would be most concerned of promoting themselves. And then at the next level, the matches on the card, and then the show. A football player, what are they obligated to promote? Themselves, their brand, then their team, then the NFL. Does this make sense now? What is the head of the NFL going to promote first? The brand, the NFL, then themselves, I'm the commissioner, then individual game. Oh, we've got a bunch of great games coming up. But he, they don't devote a lot of their energy to talk about individual games. They talk about the NFL. Then they talk about themselves. Now this is all coming into place, isn't it? Right. Bookers. You too should be promoting. But yours is in a completely different order than the other two. Bookers should promote the matches first. Right? Because those are the stories that you're putting together. So as a booker, you should be excited up and down the card about the matches taking place. And that's what bookers should be talking about. Dylan, for Southern Honor, shouldn't be talking about Southern Honor primarily. He should be talking about, I'm excited about this match. 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 Whenever I interview a booker on Tipping Point, what I ask them is, what are matches that you're excited about? That's me trying to get them to do this. 
right? Talk about the matches. Don't talk about the fucking promotion. That's the promoter's job. And with a promoter, I ask them questions related to their show, to their promotion, because that's their first priority, right? But for bookers, we don't care about the individual fucking personality of the booker. That's what Vince Russo never understood. We don't give a fuck about the booker, or we shouldn't, because knowing who the booker is doesn't make you money. Makes sense now, doesn't it? Doesn't make sense. Right. So it's about individual matches. Bookers promote the matches that are taking place. Right. Then they promote the show. Then they promote themselves. Third priority. Last priority is bookers putting themselves over. Cool. Let that sink in. What if I'm a referee? What should I be promoting? Hmm? If you're trying to win a Georgia Wrestling History Award, you'd probably promote yourself first, wouldn't you? Then talk about the matches that you're excited to be a part of, and then ex didn't talk about the shows. If, you're, if your goal is to make the promotion happy, then referees, what should you promote first? The show. Then you can talk about individual matches if you want to get make the boys happy. And then you can talk about yourself reflexively. It's a game. Folks, all of this is a game. And it's about winning the game. And it doesn't mean you're being deceitful or manipulative. But if you're not doing things with an express purpose, then you're missing the whole point of this entire video, which is everything that you are obligated to do is in service to yourself. Not just yourself, the shows as well, but it's to help you. That's why I make these videos, to motherfucking help you. So listen and learn, okay? Ring announcers, what about you? Same thing. Are you, are, you, are you trying to get a job with that show on a permanent basis? Then you better promote that fucking show beforehand, right? I'm excited to be at Southern Honor tonight. I'm excited to be at Southern Fried tonight. For some people, they promote themselves first. And that's okay too. Jonathan Feltner has done a great job of promoting the fact that he's won announcer of the year five times in a row. And I know that because he said that. And it's very smart because his priority is to win again. Doesn't mean he doesn't care about the shows that he works for. Of course he does. Doesn't mean he doesn't care about being a part of great things. He says it all the time. But he's very smart at getting his own brand there. He's better at doing the wrestler thing than wrestlers themselves many times. He gets his own brand out there. That's his priority. Then he talks about matches that he's interested in or people that he's interested in working with or things that have made an impact on him. And then he promotes the shows that he's going to be on. Lining up those three things, because you can't treat them all equally. Bookers should be talking about the matches. Promoters should be talking about the promotions. Wrestlers should be talking about themselves. Easy peasy. But you should be working and promoting all the time. Everybody should. Imagine if you had 20 people working on a show and every one of them was emphasizing something slightly different, but promoting like mad all the same. Would you cover a lot more ground than 20 people sharing the same fucking flyer again and again and again? Yes, you would. Bookers, your list of, okay, look at this fucking thing. These are all the notes that I have for this. Um, this is promoters' obligations. These are the wrestlers' obligations. These are the ring announcers. These are the refs. These are the bookers. So I'm going to tackle bookers first. Fuck, Steve, that's a long list. You're goddamn right it is. Bookers should be the most important person there. That's going to bother people. Oh, well. But without promoters, there wouldn't be anybody there. True. Most of the bills wouldn't be paid. True. Without the wrestlers, you know, you wouldn't even have a show. True. Without the fans, we do this for the fans. Eh, true. Fuck the fans, though. But the booker 
if they're doing all of these obligations, it's the difference between a shit show and a good show, and a good show and a great show, and a great show and the best show. You can't have the best show without the best, if not one of the best, bookers, period. There have been shows that have gotten by with shitty promoters. There have been shows that got by with shit talent. But no show has gotten by without a vision. Period. Unless it was just a pure shit show. The booker, you should be there before everybody. You and the promoter should be there before everybody. The wrestler should see you when they come in. And then you have decisions to make. Are you going to be the Paul Heyman style booker? I would call him more of the player coach. He's the guy that put his chair and table famously right in the middle of the locker room. He didn't have an office space to himself. Other promotions handle things in different ways, right? In the landmark arena, the office was a whole separate thing. The promoter and booker tended to be in there. It's not that they didn't interact with the boys. It's not that they didn't care about the boys. That's how they chose to do it. They chose to have an office space. Paul Heyman, he was right in the middle and right in the thick of everything. Vince McMahon, they make you walk through a series of corridors and then you have to go approach the emperor, right? All different priorities, different obligations. But the peon writers intermingle and they go and you'll find them at the mostly at the craft services table and trying to sneak a look at Sasha Banks ass. God, I hate fucking writers, but I love bookers. Bookers should be there before everybody. They should have already contacted the wrestlers. They should have already dealt with the wrestlers. The wrestlers should know through the booker, my opinion, what time they are expected to be there. And if they can't be there at that time, everybody should already know it. Nobody should be hanging anybody out to dry. The booker should be working with the promoter, of course. There should be run sheets abound in the uh, dressing room area. People should know what the fuck is going on. First thing the wrestlers would do at PCW is I'd have that run sheet up and then I'd have one on me and then I'd usually have one somewhere else. And they would walk up and they'd go like, okay, this is where I am. We used a dry erase board. I didn't like that as much, but we used a dry erase board in Porterdale. Um, my run sheets were much more detailed. Not psychotically detailed, but detailed. Who was wrestling whom? Um, you should give time expectations to every segment. Because just by doing that, just by writing the times out, you would find out stuff. Um, Dylan would have found out AC Mac, we're making him talk too long and this thing is shitty. It's too fucking long. That's important. Yeah, you got to know that time shit. You got to give time expectations. Um, and you should tell each match, you should tell them what the finish is. This practice I've heard of at other promotions, and none of the bigs do this, but I've seen this before where you pass off delivering bad news, essentially, who's jobbing and all that stuff. You leave that up to the boys or you leave it up to somebody else is shit. And that practice needs to stop. If you've got the stones to have the vision, if you are fucking holding the pencil as the booker, then you can fucking man or woman up and tell people what you are expecting in their match. Not ambiguously. Every wrestler, hear, hear this. You all have this story, right? Of the, the somebody who was too afraid to tell you what the finish was. So you didn't know. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, the, or if you're dealing with a booker that lets you work out your finish, like basically tells you, well, you guys decide who's going over. What they're telling you is your match is not part of a vision. Bookers, you got to fucking get some stones and you got to tell them what you expect in the finish, which you might get pushback and you might have an interaction and you might change things. You might tweak things, but anything that's important to your vision you got to let them know what your expectations are and you got to have a dialogue. Another reason you need to be there first. So you can talk to people as they come in. 
Um, assign agents as needed. I used to actually have them down on run sheets. The agent for this match is so-and-so wrestler, and the agent for this match is so-and-so wrestler, and I would tailor it based on what they needed. If there are they a person that had never been to PCW before, then I might give, an, give them an agent of a wrestler that they were familiar working with already in a different promotion, so they would be comfortable. And that wrestler could let them know the deal. What are the agent's obligations? To know what the vision is, and to make sure shit is not repeated, and make sure we're not shitting on the main event by doing the same things throughout the card. I can watch national level shows and see that they have not agented successfully. That's a problem. There's no reason that shouldn't be handled. Now maybe you're listening to this and going like, I've never had an agent in a match. Somebody the like help me out. Then you wrestled for shit shows. And if you're hearing this now, especially if you're in a smaller promotion that tends to listen when I give booking advice, you should be having agents. If the problem is, well, but then who would that be? Because none of us know what we're doing. That's the problem. Hmm. Clearly delineate responsibilities. Who is doing what? Who is taking care of the details? Who is making sure music is handled correctly? Who is making sure everything is checked off on a list? Who is making sure that the sound was checked? Who is making sure, who's making sure, who's making sure? And ultimately, who's the, where does the buck stop? With you, Booker, my opinion. Promoters have a lot to do. Promoters are making sure the general atmosphere of the thing is great, especially once fans start going in. It's the promoter, because again, what are their jobs? To promote the show and then promote themselves. Gary Lamb is the epitome of this, right? Does he shake hands with every fucker that comes to his shows? Yes, and he should be. It's the booker's job to make sure shit's getting handled, especially last minute. That's why bookers who put themselves prominently in the shows, I hate it. You shouldn't have fucking time. Anytime that I was going to be involved in a PCW show, I hated it because it was like, fuck. Especially if I was going to be doing something big, like I was going to be blading or whatever. I had to get all that shit straight because I had obligations, right? I was the promoter and the booker. Let's not even get started there. Um Bookers should speak to everyone individually about what he or she expects of them and address them as the group. The bookers should be giving the speech. Um, promoters can as well, of course, but the bookers should be talking to everybody. What's the vision? I always had a thing of what I wanted the stage picture to be at the end of the show. This is, the, this is what I want to see. This is the snapshot that I want. And any of the big moments, these are the snapshots that I want. I would always say that I wanted the crowd to talk about three things that had nothing to do with what happened bell to bell. The kind of thing you would talk about to somebody who wasn't a wrestling fan. Oh my God, this happened and then this happened and then this happened. I want somebody to be able to clearly delineate important parts of my story to an outsider to draw them in. Got to be flexible. God, I've seen a lot of promoters just lose their shit and start throwing people under the bus. If you fuckers would just blah, blah, blah. And this guy's always fucking late and you guys with your fucking lame excuses and da, 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 da. Got to be flexible. This thing that we've had lately of bookers and promoters bitching about, oh, we had to change the card. In PCW, I've said this before, we had two over 200 booking sheets that somebody compiled for me that I did over the couple of years. You know how many of them didn't have to be altered on show day? Two ever out of 200. Do the math. I'll save you the trouble, round eyes. That's 1%. 99% of the cards I had to alter or change in some way right before showtime. Quit your bitching. Be flexible. Don't panic. Don't panic.
panic, don't panic. I panicked exactly once ever. And that's when Davey Richards, who was supposed to be a prominent part of this tournament we were doing, showed up fucking in the middle of the show. And I had to book it on the fly. That's the only time I can ever remember panicking. Um, other stuff, we had sewage pipes burst in the middle of the show. Kept going. People got injured. Found a way. Took care of them. Kept going. Disaster after disaster. Unruly fans that I physically grabbed, picked up, and dragged into a locker room for punishment. That's a story for Patreon, by the way. All the fan interactions that I've had. Uh, kept going. Yeah, can't panic. You got to sell your vision. Everybody in wrestling is a salesperson. Hear that. You don't, I hate sales. You're in the wrong job because everybody in wrestling is selling something. And for the bookers, you're selling your vision. Well, I don't really have a, that's a problem. <laughs> but if you have a vision and you should, you should be selling that vision and getting people on board. Ruling by fear, again, that's the lowest tier of Kohlberg's morality pyramid. We've talked about that before. Fear of punishment is not enough to get people to really follow you and have a combined, have a really cohesive locker room. They have to buy into your vision and everybody's got to be pulling in the same direction, right? And they're not pulling you. You've seen that meme before. I really like it where it shows like, uh, you know, a shitty boss is somebody who sits on the chair and everybody pulls them. A great boss is somebody who's along with them and everybody's pulling together. Yeah. You want everybody pulling in the same direction. That doesn't mean everybody has to get along. It doesn't mean any of that shit. It just means that people have to buy into the vision enough and they see their own self-interest enough in that vision that everybody's pulling. If you're booking yourself in any way, shape, or form, lead by example. Nobody worked harder at their ring entrances than I did, and everybody saw it. Steve cares this much about how he's going to the ring. I need to as well. If it comes down to a war games thing where people are bleeding and I'm involved in it, nobody's going to bleed more than me. Nobody, because I'm showing them there's nothing I'm going to have you do that I would not ask of myself. When it came time to get humiliated and do a payoff, I did it more than anybody. Who got their head shaved in PCW? Two people ever, De La Vega and myself. Maybe Matt Myers did too. But when you're booking yourself, lead by example. That doesn't mean you have to be the best wrestler, but it means you have to deliver. And finally, bookers, promote the matches, promote the show, and then promote yourself. Promoters. These are going to go faster now, don't worry. Clearly have a method and way that you pay people and stick to it. Do you pay everybody before the show? Do you hand them the money as soon as they come through the curtain after their match? Do you pay everybody immediately at the show's conclusion? Whatever you do, make sure people know what you do and then stick to it. This horse shit of people waiting around to get paid has to end. Promote the show, promote yourself, promote the matches. Promoters, you got to make sure the logistics are handled. You got to follow behind the bookers and make sure it's all getting done. You got to be grateful. And your job is to get people to watch the shows. Nothing more. That's your primary directive. Wrestlers, you have to know your obligations. When are you supposed to show up? Are you expected to tear down the ring? Then you got to live up to them. You got to arrive on time. You got to let people know what's going on. Like it's a real job. You got to treat it like a job. Yeah. You got to be cool to everybody. You got to say what's up to everybody. That just goes for everybody, right? And to everybody, you got to play the game. 
Where can I do the most good is the question you should be asking yourself. Yeah. And then primarily your job is to promote your match, promote the show, but primarily promote yourself. Yeah. Now we can go through the last two really quickly. Ring announcers. What style are you going to do your announcing? You should get together with the booker and the promoter and make sure you know what you're doing. Yeah. Is there anything that needs to be emphasized? You should be running at basically the same timber and the same beat, but maybe for the main event, they do something different. Uh, maybe for a stipulation match, they want you to do it differently. Make sure you're coordinated with all this stuff. Are you supposed to banter with the audience between matches? I hate when ring announcers do that, but other people may want that. Just make sure they know or they tell you what's expected. And then lastly, make sure you know everything that you're supposed to say and how you're supposed to say it. You're going to have to talk to the individual wrestlers, how they want to be introduced. Then you're going to have to clear that with promoters and bookers in most cases. Make sure you're saying the correct thing, right? Referees, finally. You got to know what's going on. You can't screw up the finishes. You have to realize that you're an integral part of the match, but you're not the an equally important part of the match. That's just the way it is. Yeah. You got to talk to the boys and the girls to find out exactly what's going on, what their expectations are. Are they going to use you to talk to each other? And if you don't know, find out. And finally, you have to make sure anything unusual happening in that match is understood completely. And that comes down to stage picture. Make sure you're not blocking somebody's vision of something. Make sure you know where camera people are that are taking pictures and video. Yeah. Everybody needs to be grateful. Everybody needs to be cool with each other. That's our simple rundown of expectations. This has been Pro Wrestler's Handbook.